This is the new Apple TV, the long-awaited device that has been changed in every way, for the most part at least. So this version has new hardware both inside and out, running tvOS, a variant of iOS that's better suited for the TV. The box itself looks similar to the one before it, but it's noticeably thicker, and that's thanks to the new internals. The Apple TV now has an Apple A8 processor and variations of 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage. This along with all the normal connectivity like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi make the Apple TV's footprint a bit bigger. On the back, the ports have changed a bit as well. You still have the normal ports like HDMI and Ethernet, but there's no longer an optical audio port, and instead of micro USB, there's a new USB Type-C connector for servicing. Aside from those changes, you won't really notice too much different until you turn the TV on. To do that, you're going to be using the new Siri remote. The remotes of the past have not been the most functional, but this version hopes to relieve any remote woes you may have had. Now it's made of aluminum and glass with a few more input options and smarter tech inside. It's very thin and lightweight and the main way you interface with it is with a touchpad up top. It has a nice soft finish to it so your fingers can glide easily and when you want to select you just click and the whole surface reacts. You do have dedicated buttons as well though. A menu button and a home button up top, a Siri and play pause button, and volume control. Even though the touchpad is the main way to get around the menus, these buttons give you just a few more options. The remote also has an accelerometer built in so you can use it as a controller like you might with your phone, and this would come in handy for games and different other apps. The remote charges over lightning cable which is included in the box, and the charge should last months with normal use. The software you're controlling is the biggest change though. It isn't a totally different layout, but it has been updated and streamlined to make navigation easier and simpler. You still get your grid of basic apps, but you'll notice that it's pretty empty, and that's because there's now a new app store. Here you can download the other apps you might have been used to, like Netflix and Hulu, and it's also open to third party so anyone can make an app like games, shopping, or social apps. Once you have all those apps downloaded and you're ready to watch something, there's a few ways of doing it. The first is the normal way, by going to an app and finding what you want to watch, but now there's a dedicated search and Siri, and these together make watching a movie or a show much faster. Siri is definitely the easiest way to find something to watch. To activate it, you just hold down the Siri button and the remote and talk. Siri can help with basic things like movies, TV shows, weather, and sports, and with the new search capabilities, you can get thorough results. So not only can you ask about a particular movie or show, but you can ask about actors, genres, and new releases. These options will appear on the lower half of the screen, and from there you can refine the search even more or select what you want to watch. When you select something, you now have a unified search area that shows you your selection, but also shows you where to watch it. So if it's available on iTunes or Netflix, it will give you both options and you can choose which one you want, and the same goes for other apps. The unified search doesn't work for all apps though, just specific partnered apps like Netflix, Hulu, or HBO, but the ones that are there definitely make finding what you want to watch much easier. And that is an overview of the new Apple TV. There's definitely a lot changed and a lot of potential from this device. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to subscribe and visit MacRumors.com for more Apple TV coverage. I'm Matt Gonzalez with MacRumors, and we will see you in the next one.